Hello, and welcome to Boundary Break. No, this doesn't sound right. Oh, let me try this one. This is son of a glitch. No, no, I mean, no, not really. No, no, no. Ah, 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 this is the one, this is the one. This is Security Breach, and we're gonna beat it without jump. No, I don't wear hats, so it can't be me. Oh, that's right, I don't have a tagline. Huh. Well, that's okay. But I do have a thing, and that is Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. So, hello. Welcome to Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Two weeks ago, I got free camera working, and that's all I've been doing. I was so ecstatic, and I, can't, I had to make another long video. So sorry for that. There's so much to show. I wanted to show every level and, and fly through all of the streets and show you everything. But that would take hours. And maybe I'll show more of the levels later on. But today's video is anything special, anything small and unique, any burning questions that I had that I can share with you, and unique things. So, strap in and get ready for a ride. Because it's showtime, baby. So some of these things go pretty quick. This is when you load the gun, the guy walks out. And if you shoot him, he just keeps popping out. I try to get footage. I kept messing up. Where you start the game, where you, where you grab the weapons on your side, is just the basketball court from Rampart. You can actually, you actually saw the hole on the top where you drop down to the locked room to find the guy. They just put it here. And some sweet B-roll of the uh, tutorial. So, we're calling this one Henri's Camp, but it's anything that's connected to it. So, Henri's Camp, the boat area, all that stuff. Now, there was so much that this video probably was a little bit more of me uh, excited to look around that specific area. So, you will get to see quite a lot of things. So, this push first little section here is just kind of flying around his camp. And uh, some of this stuff is earlier footage before I learned to consolidate information down to what is necessary to show. So this part right here shows uh, certain items in his camp. Is it a pal palico? I'm not sure. Uh, there's a doll there, so maybe he left the dolls around. I don't know. It'd be pretty cool if he did. I kind of like that idea. You'll see some clothes and you'll see some like supplies, like food and drinks in the background. Uh, nothing too, too exciting. There is money in the fire. It's kind of cool what I would do with it in the apocalypse and of course how can it be a free camera video if you don't go inside the character models walking dead character models are just as creepy as walking dead game can be itself um, I know some people some people might not think it's too creepy but this game can be kind of creepy and this is a pretty good showcase of it however he's the only character with eyebrows and a beard everyone just kind of has the eyeballs and the mouth uh, the teeth to help them talk, obviously, to show them moving, and the eyeballs move separately, so. Now, these next couple ones are going to be transitions. Now, the first one is transitioning from Henri's camp to the area, but since I left the area a little bit, you get to see this, the actual map before it goes in. You'll see more of that later. And then that's the transition into the boat area, and that's you before it transitions into the boat. You just live in a black box. And Henri is always in the map. Because I guess they associated him with his voice, and so they, they need him there. So he just chills. This is the first set of zombies that jump out. This is before they ever leave. They're like on a, they're like on a track. So they, they gotta follow it. You'll see some floating cans and some guns here from these guys. Again, they don't even show up yet until you actually get closer. And then these three dudes. Um... Now for the helicopter, I thought there'd be more, but there's the black box. I think it's a trigger to activate the next couple of events. If anyone knows if that like antler mask is in the game, please comment. I don't know if it is. I always forget. This lady is just kind of hanging out there for a little bit. And then when you go under the bridge, it activates her movement, which is that. And then she just teleports back. So this footage is my earlier footage that I was trying my best to get. What's interesting is you'll see some uh, character models and you'll see like they're contorted underneath. Like it's the only time in the game you'll see specific 
twisted looking models because that's the scripted time they actually do that which is interesting and in doing so I don't remember seeing her maybe she was one of the zombies that got attacked but earlier on I had zoomed in to see like all jet black eyes which was super interesting and I you know wanted to find that again so I am sorry for a little bit longer footage here I tried to find it again and uh, that zombie might have just been in the water she just confused me but um it's still kind of cool to see all these little tiny details put into the game now those aren't the eyes the next eyes are hers and um yeah they are gonna be all black now they could just be because underwater but before they weren't but to get every single detail is kind of impossible so i'm not on the left side they pop into existence sorry again earlier footage but as we flew through the map earlier you saw they weren't there so they come into existence there now we're going to see some of the animation that they choose to do when they shoot them and then they knock them off the deck into the water and all that all that jazz which by the way the axe man's based off uh, like a jazz not a jazz guy, but a guy who liked jazz from a long time ago. It's actually like a real thing. It's super weird. Take a look, look, look into it. Sorry for the side note, but I said all that jazz and I just couldn't resist to say it. There's an axe man and if you played jazz, he wouldn't kill you and everyone played jazz that night. Look it up. It's crazy. And then there's these psychopaths and their crazy costumes. Still pretty cool though. Love the menacing look. This is a view of the path your boat takes. Now you saw the person up top. You'll see these three guys here. Now I do have another footage that has something specific, but this is some of the more detail. This is after we have left. They are just kind of preset there. Still really cool to see um, that some of the stuff has uh, like their, their fixtures in themselves so you can see which ones were important enough for them to have a permanent placement on the map and of course the last one is this area right here and then you'll see it a little brighter and a little funnier if you will So as I said, there's two footages for this, and this was the first one I got, and I got the second one later, and I just thought it was cool to show both. So this is a track that you take when you're leaving. Now I kept this one specific for one specific reason. It's a little brighter, you can see exactly where you're headed, but there's one funny thing that I had to keep, and it's this beautiful man right here. Come on, look at that face, those eyes, man, you, you know, you get lost in them, right? You could see yourself walking on the beach with him, huh? Those blue, brown, gray, green, I actually don't know what his eyes color is, but it's just beautiful. And this scene is uh, when your boat gets destroyed. I wanted to show the graveyard from a distance because that light is supposed to be like a beacon. It's been so long since I watched the intro I didn't realize that that light from the graveyard is there. But there's some of the graveyard section. And I will show um, one more thing in a second. And that is them destroying the boat from a different angle. If you're not gonna have free camera to do different angles, then why do it? So this kind of freaked me out when I first saw it. It is just every dead body suspended there 
from when your boat gets destroyed. Yeah, it was a bit uh, surprising for me. I was like, jeez. It's like one of those horror movies and you're like, the big climactic scene and it's just blood everywhere and stuff and it's just, uh, yeah, that's literally where your, uh, the boat scene is on the map. And here's going to be one circle around it. While you're dead center. So if that's uh, disturbing and creepy, then uh, yeah, I wouldn't look at the rest. But this is an overview, and every level will have an overview. I'm not going to fly in between each building and showcase everything. Like I said in the intro, it would take hours. Meh, maybe not hours, but a solid hour of just flying. And, uh, yeah. So, enjoy some overview. Top down shots. And in my journey for all this work, I got the greatest thing of all. My new god. My new personal god, of course. You can welcome to join my religion. Of course. In the distance, I saw it. I didn't know what it was. But it is the Golden Crow. The Golden Crow God. Boga. I praise him. He is my, he is my walking dead god. Praise him, too. So like most games, Walking Dead is no different. It uses the like black boxes for you to teleport. And this is when you come into the game. I don't know what this one is. It's actually in the distance. Uh, in the graveyard, I have no idea. I think it might be the credit screen box. And, are you ready to see us, our grand entrance into the game? Poof. This is... Saved Casey Loot. I don't know exactly what it was supposed to be for, because you don't really get anything from it. So I wanted to get the church a little more, because while everything kind of stays the same there, uh, the bell is not really there until the ending of the game. So I got a couple of really cool footages from footage from the church area. And I wanted to see where the um, like bell how far the uh, far the rope goes. So here it is. It makes it all the way down underneath and it actually goes pretty far down. You don't have to go that far, but it does. And here's the bell ringing. Because who doesn't love a nice little uh, pretty bell moment? And here's her ringing it. Nothing moves. So this one's a bit trickier. So here we go. This is Aftershocks Burgled. And. I wanted to see when it activated, so I walked forward. As you see, when I walk forward, I appear. So I've always wondered where they go, because you never can race them because they're too fast. Here is the answer. They actually run the whole way there, from the very beginning to the very end. And if you saw my video, uh, Can You Beat Walking Dead True Pass for this run? So like 10 of you did, uh, at some point you knew you can keep Henri around, which is cool, and he can kill one of them, and I imagine if one of them dies to him, or by you, then only one run, one runs back. So I at least kept the whole run there, just to, just to prove that you can. Again, this is also earlier footage, so sorry for less control over my ability with it when it comes to the free camera. You get better over time.
And if you're someone like me who, want, who wanted a closer look at that boat, there you go. Placeholder prologue. Now this was one of my more favorite things that I found. If you watched my Out of Bounds video, and glitch video, you know that you can get back into the church. So I did that when I finished the game and I figured out how to do it to see what was happened. And your ending stays put directly after you beat the game. But if you go to another map, it does disappear. And that was one of my favorite things to learn. I don't know if it happens with every ending, but maybe it might. So leave a comment if you do it. And you can watch that Out of Bounds video and you can do it yourself. You don't need no free camera to see it. You can actually just climb in and check out yourself. So if you do it, please let me know if alternate endings, uh, they're, if they're still there. And this is, of course, some sweet B-roll of the graveyard. Across the river, there are some buildings, and some buildings actually are textured. So it leads me to believe there was going to be more buildings on that side. I wish there were more places and secretly explore and like little hidden stories to tell. Ah, Rampart. Love, hate, love, hate. Um, Rampart. So this is the evil hallway, the hallway that makes me have nightmares still. They put a gigantic uh, cover over the top so it always stays dark. That's why it's so dark. At the end, they have lighting on purpose. And if you wanted to know what it's like above the stairs, then that's what it looks like. Oh man, who doesn't love giant white square? Not a cube, just a flat square. It's actually a grid, and I'm not exactly sure what they intend with it, but I guess with the bright light, they could have just put that up for a building. But there's no other buildings that have that kind of like flat piece to it. And this part right here is always one that I liked. It was when I entered this uh, part of the building, each letter is rendered. It's not like it's a plaque and they just put it on top. They could have done that. They didn't have to render it. And the building also seems to have a connection between one side and the other side. And a, and a line, which is another uh, texture, that connects both sides. I would bet money that they intended this whole entire school to be explorable. And I really do wish, developers, if you're not hearing this, because no way you're watching my video. But if you do, please make some more side stories. Even tiny notes and stuff to give us more of a world building. And of course, this is uh, the school, uh, upstairs and downstairs. And I just always love seeing how they go about piecing together. It's a pretty impressive. And again, if you're here, then most likely you enjoy seeing these kind of things too. It's so fascinating. So I was gonna show under the underground, like under the bounds of the entire map. But a lot of times it's just either you fall forever or you don't. I'm showing you this one because for whatever reason, this map, all the buildings have uh, that layer where you would be able to stand on them. Like you would not fall down if you could land, if you could step on them. I don't know why this place has them, but they do. And that's the uh, plane that we walk on. So this one is to show that there's several layers. So, so there's the one you walk on. There is um, the specific one on the very tippy top right there to have texture to it and then the water. So that's pretty cool to see the different layers on each place. Um, I thought that was cool to show that the water is so brightly blue. And yes, I will show off the bridge and the boat in the corner. And once again, sweet, sweet B-roll. I really do have a love-hate with Rampart. It's both oddly beautiful, but frustrating all at the same time. And if you ask me why, that's a good question. Because I don't have a great answer. So this is Old Town. Not much here, but I thought there's a good chance to kind of explain what you'll see in some levels, or what I'll call a deload. It's abstract, so I hope this metaphor helps. If you imagine the game like a house, 
and on the first floor of the house you can see every room, every floor, outside, all the trees, all the people, everything. But if somehow you can get to the second floor, which is usually not possible in games, it would only show up certain things, like doors or people, or animals or trees. And that means everything else got unloaded and you, it just disappears because you're on that level. So deloads and games are like that. If you can get to a, a plane in the game that you're not supposed to, everything else disappears. So that's what you'll see in some of these maps. That's an item in the distance. I don't know why I have it. I thought it was cool. And a sideways building you don't normally see sideways. But a lot of buildings are repeated. Uh, this one, however, is different. I don't know why they have it like this, but they use that texture, and I think maybe it's only in scene in like one other place in the entire game. Maybe in the attic in the church? I'm not sure. But it was unique, and the building actually has a lot of unique pieces to it, so they maybe were planning to use it for something. And again, I fell into the deload plane. Hey look, there it is in the background. That's why I went to it. And pink shingles. I uh, don't know why they made those. I don't think there is other pink shingles. I may be wrong, but I thought that was cool. I stopped flying to go check it out. And then of course, sweet, sweet B-roll. Now, you probably see a lot of things in the background, like a bridge and the tower and the other buildings. You're asking yourself, why haven't we seen them yet? You will, at the very, very end. Uh, they're just, they're like models and textures. So I figured at the end, when we're wrapping up, I can do my outro and you can see them. They're not necessary to be seen every time because they're in every map, so I'm not going to show it for everything. Now, for intermission, the stylings of this guy dancing, which is me. Enjoy your break. Now back to our regularly scheduled video. By regularly scheduled, I mean randomly posted video. So these are all pictures on the wall in the Axeman lair. Now, they're probably out there somewhere, or maybe this is closer to pictures than previously had. And if that's the case, I hope you can, uh, if you want to check them out, you know, pause it, screenshot them, use them. Or just pause it and look at them now. I suffer from dyslexia, so the cursive one I actually can't read that well. If anybody either knows what it says or can read it, pause it, help me out, and comment, because I would like to actually know what it says. In mines, it have been so cool to have mines. I think we have like proximity ones, like the little gooey ones, the, the, the nail bombs, but I want like a real mine. It would be really cool. So if you don't kill JB or the tower people and you head back to the boat, you hear gunfire. I wanted to know what happened, so I came here and walked from across the map into the boat zone, hit the trigger, nothing happened. Just sound. I know you don't hear gunshots, but there was gunshots. So I went flying into the house to see, well, maybe JB's just standing there. They kill him. I was surprised. Now, you're probably saying, ah, person who makes YouTube videos randomly, uh, I knew that. All right, and if you did, you're much more of a mega fan than I am. But the doors are exploded. I I don't know why that happens. So I decided to, uh, you know, explore a little more. So I had to actually time everything and line up myself to walk past the trigger to see what happens. But before I did that, I actually ran back here after seeing if the tower people were dead, and they're not. 
and I ran back here to see what had happened. And the next scene you're going to see is uh, JB is a zombie. I didn't know he becomes a zombie. I was surprised. And she just acts like nothing happened, which is crazy because he's uh, he's been, he's killed. So here's what happens. I'm gonna be quiet. Enjoy the scene. <laughs> How cool is that? He just explodes. So when you cross the trigger going to the boat and hear gunshots fire, he just explodes. It just blows up. It's probably my second favorite thing. My first favorite thing I found while doing this video is not that interesting. I'm going to be clear with you. But that is my favorite scene. <laughs> that made me laugh. Anyways, overview. So this is Shallows. Now, Shallows doesn't have too much, but it has my favorite thing. Again, I said a little bit ago, it is not that interesting. But it's my favorite thing. So this is a nice little deload. So you get to check out some more of the uh, little bit of features that the game has. This is the graveyard area that you can kind of see over top but not too well so it's a little bit more of it and I took it under the map because like I said shallows didn't have too much and I decided to show what it looked like underneath so here it is underneath that building is the only one that they doubled up on top everything else is pretty much simple now I did have one question is that guy is that woman's husband here and here's the question here's the answer he's always right there. This is actually much later in the game. He's just still there. He waits for you. So he's never not in the game, which is kind of cool. And here it is. My favorite thing. The boxes. Why? I don't have a good answer for you. Maybe it's some crazy thing. Maybe it's just my enjoyment of things that don't make sense. Or why are they there? Well, I don't know. I'm do what are they doing there? They're just floating, man. And if you think they're cool, like me, please leave a comment if that was your favorite thing. If not, uh, please also insult me. I think it'd be kind of funny. Uh, I just like those little things, those little details of why the box is there, what is it doing there, makes me laugh. But uh, like I said, Shallows didn't have too much, but there's a couple of things and, you know, hopefully you, you found something interesting. Of course, besides the boxes, because they're the best. Now, I don't know what you guys think of the ward, but I actually kind of like the level. Um, this part is super cool right here. This is a texture on the side of a building in the ward. It is a parking garage, but the texture that you just saw is definitely a 3D model print of a gun. Why they put it on the outside of this, I guess they had to rush it and put it out, and they had to put like a, a wall on it, but it, it baffles me. This is the top down of the whole tower. This is in the aftershock, so you'll see the guys uh, hanging upside down, which is always creepy. The Axe Man really likes to uh, leave a message. And this is the bridge. I do not, I show the case, this bridge here. Um, I guess I was wrong. It's here instead of the very ending, but there are other things in the ending. The reason I show it here is because it's a little brighter and you can see more things. Like, look at those tires. Man, you'd go so fast. You'd be like a NASCAR driver, man. It'd be amazing. Um, The bridge is in a lot of levels and every time I've done any footage for it, it's always the same. So I just figured I would do one set of several. I always like those beams because they don't have to put the beams there. You'll never see them. And uh, it's a lot longer than you think it is. It keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. And um, all the way to the end of the map on several uh, levels. 
there's tons of cars too. Some cars you don't even see on the main map. And now I'm going for that small building. The uh, building is so far away. I was kind of hoping there was something to this building, but there's not. But it's so far away. I don't even know what angle you would you could possibly see it. They must have left there by accident, and they just didn't care to remove it. And I'm going to show you how far away it really is. Like, what does that serve? It's crazy. This building, I actually don't know if it shows up anywhere else in the game. If it does, it's got to be low, like low, low poly building somewhere else. I, I just thought it was interesting. So if someone else knows where that's from, let me know. And of course, like I do with every ending of every level, the full shot. Yeah, I like the ward. The ward might be in there. See that building? Way far back. Don't know why. The ward might be one of my favorite levels. I, I don't have a good answer why. It just, it just is. When I searched via Corolla, there wasn't a whole lot left. A whole lot there to see, I mean. Uh, there's a fight just off screen you don't normally see, but it's like a whole other mapped area. There's my man just swimming, having a good old time, you know. There's a couple of D-loads you can find. You can see all the doors and the buildings. That always makes me excited because that's always so cool. And uh, that's pretty much it. So if you guys do a free camera and you find something really trippy or tiny or boxes maybe um yeah yeah please uh let me know and uh here's of course the overview shot now if i not have said already the bridges and the outside stuff i'll show at the end because they're in every level but i do like the levels that are more bright it's still scary but it's still kind of beautiful at the same time now the next place is going to be a little more interesting memorial lane now, as we saw at the main campaign and uh, Bastion, you know that there's no fighting happening. They just all kind of stand there. But they actually animated everyone fighting. So that's kind of cool. There's a lamp, uh, like an electrical post that's really detailed in the background. It doesn't have to be. It can be flat if it wants to. And I saw this little building here to fly through. You know, sometimes you find something cool and you just want to show it because it's neat. And there's no other maps have those little, like, little walkways it's kind of cool that you will never ever see in a million years and right over the bus is like a small neighborhood ready to be used it has an alleyway and everything they could really have made little side stories in different parts of the map and i think that would have made the world so much bigger not that it's not great but it'd be better now if you like crows are you in for a treat? Whoo, because you are about to get crow b-roll for like an hour. And I know that's why you clicked this. You know, you were looking at this and you were like, look, man, I searched through videos to find crow footage because that's my thing. Like crow pro, Mr. Crow's videos. You know what I mean? Great YouTube channel, by the way. Crow pro. Just so much crows. Now, I know it's odd, but, oh, and that weird floaty thing, I, I saw it when I turned around, and I'm like, why is that up there? It has no reason to be up there. And have I not looked up in the game to see it? Am I fighting zombies too much? But you know what? No need to worry, because we're back to crows, man. They're just so detailed, and they're only in this part of the game at this time. I, I don't know why they're so detailed, and I don't know why I was so mesmerized. So unfortunately, you have to live with it too. I'm sorry. And of course, overview. Uh, the that house is kind of wigging out with uh, some textures from the inside. Yeah, I really would have loved to show more footage of around the areas and the maps, but there's just so much to see. It would take, like I said in the beginning, hours. 
the rest of the video is going to be miscellaneous and game mechanics. Most of the player, because that was so very fascinating. Um, of course, this part right here is just a black box that helps with transition to eight other levels. Almost every level has one. Almost. I haven't found them all, but that's how it works. Now, sorry for the next footage. It's sideways, because it was me learning how to do free camera, which I was very excited about. And this is me trying to kill a walker. Uh, well, third person, I guess. And it's not easy. You need depth perception in this game, for sure. But doing so, I also discovered something, which is the reason this video is here, and the reason why you're watching it now. And it is the character that you also are. You are also that character model. So, you are two character models, which is going to be complicated. And in a little bit, I will give you that exposition. It's a little bit more challenging to explain, but you will get more detail soon. This is what happens after you're dead. The zombies had killed me, and when you go back to your thing, your menu, and then you leave the menu, you are actually in a uh, black ball in the sky, way above the map. I'm talking way above the map. I'm talking if you do regular speed uh, camera, it takes forever to get down there. Um, if you're sensitive to suicidal issues, I, I'm sorry. This is just a game mechanic. I wanted to showcase everything I could. Uh, please get help if that's the case. But you see as the screen is black on the sides because your, your, your vision changes and then the red comes in for the blood. And then you spin. So it seems that every time you die, you spin, which is interesting. And uh, yeah, the black ball will be in the sky right now. And the people in the background, I don't know if you saw, but they kind of vanished, which is cool. And of course, it's time for the female character reveal. Oh. The anticipation. What a handsome woman. Nah, it's just the same model. They both, they use them both for the player character. Because there's no way you'd see this normally. Or anyone's seen this yet. Uh, so here's exposition drop. Here we go. You are two character models at the same time. This character model is invisible for a specific reason. They needed a structure and a hitbox. They've already had, it's, this is again, this is what I can gather. They already had physics in place for other NPCs. So they gave you an NPC model that is invisible to everybody. No one should ever see this. And they use that hitbox so you took damage the same way that the NPCs do, which I think is awesome. Now, I figured it out because these next couple scenes are the answer. And you'll see both uh, the floating arms, if you will, and the character model doing the kind of the same thing. Um, and every time you pause the screen, that's when the character shows up. I don't know why in pause, but it does. You'll see the character standing, running, walking fast, walking slow, and running. If I repeated that at any point, I'm sorry. But you will see them, and you will see both hands together in the same time. And when I was moving, I was also pausing in that same manner, whether it was running or walking. So if they both exist, they both exist at the same time every time. So, now you know that there's two character models and you share the same uh, hitbox as NPCs, which I think makes the game a little more fair, to be honest. And this is inside the head, because you have to do that, that's how it works. So hey, canonically, uh, the tourist has green eyes, blue-green eyes, which is a great color. And this is you running in third person. Go, arms, go! I believe in you. Aw, oh, man. Uh-oh. I'm really catering to the to the Crow fans out there. The Crowley fans. Cronely fans. That didn't work, did it? No, it did not. Please don't tell me it didn't work. I know it didn't. But I'm, I'm really leaning in, you know? So, got pro fans out there, please tell me. I actually know why that showed up and why this part will be a, uh, a little bit longer than expected. Only about 10 more seconds extra. Because I don't think in the middle, in the middle of video editing, I think a save didn't happen. So, I am sorry for that. But I can still go back to regularly scripted excitement now 
this right here is um, what happens after the bells ring and the zombies start pouring in. There is a max number, and the music just makes it more scary. So without the music, they'll be only, I think, capped at 14. I think I waited and I sped up in post to see how long it would take. Um, but yeah. This is when you die from a zombie attack. More specifically, did not get any footage of it specific. So here it is. Look at that spin, man. It's like a Beyblade. I love Beyblades. And of course, the next two parts are going to be character models of regular NPCs and of zombies. They are, it seems there's two pieces, cut in half torsos and legs down and then up. The head seems to be connected to the body. While there it's not super connected, um, if you look out anymore, there's no like, there's no like sectioned off head from the body. So it seems like they're, they're one piece. And the zombie's eyes are gnarly. They're like super cool and gross. So uh, yeah. And then we're wrapping it up. And this is the end. The rest is just going to be like bigger stuff, like the tower, the buildings in the background, the bridges, and especially the boat. The boat has way more detail than it has any right to have. It's kind of crazy. It's like textured and detailed all the way around. It's, it's so impressive. I had no intention of making a long video again, like my Out of Bounds video. I was just going to do a challenge run. I have, two, I have two I'm working on right now for Walking Dead. And, um... When I found free camera, I had no other option but to showcase it off, man. Whether I'm the first or I'm not, I still had to show everything that I found because there's so much to see. You can make you can make so many videos based off this. And I might make more if you guys like this one. Let me know. I hope you found some things interesting. Like, I love the player character stuff, the detail, how it interacts with the world, how they move, how, what happens when the character dies, all these unique things. I love that stuff. How JB just exploded without any context, like it was in, like it was Stranger Things, and uh, of course the boxes. You know the boxes are the best. Don't be playing with me. I can hear your thoughts. You're thinking the boxes are the best. I just don't want to say it out loud and be embarrassed. The boxes. But before I end this, I want to say two things. One, in full transparency, I was working with somebody on one or two small things in this video. I had chosen to opt out of including their information and their input. My own reasons alone that I will not share. And two, in the last video, I decided to end it with some sort of affirmation or something that was a little bit more poignant than just goodbye. And I thought that was really nice because sometimes people need to hear those things. Maybe there's a comment somebody makes that brings you back. So I don't think we do that enough, and I don't think people uh, see themselves out there and the problems they have and in other people. So maybe I can share something that can make you feel a little better. And if that's not your thing, perfectly fine. You can mute me and roll out the rest of the video. But if you're not, then here's a story. My grandmother, when she was around, was truly a saint. She could see the good in people, even when they didn't deserve it. And we always asked her why and how. And she would tell us and give us advice. And one of the things she would always say was, give 100% of yourself. Trust heart and mind every time to something or to somebody. And she would say that you will get hurt, and people will break that trust and rip your heart open. Then we asked her why do it every time. She said, because that's how the world gets better. That's how you learn. That's how you find hope in lost things and people. And it might be challenging and it might hurt, but you learn who to trust. You learn who is worth it. You learn to grow. And if you give 100% every time, the people who you find that deserve it will not hurt you and they'll be important to you forever, whether they're temporary or long-term. And you know that you gave 100% in that moment. And you can hold your head up high when you walk away. Proud that you did what's right, even if it was hard. She was wonderful. She truly was a saint. 
If she is that, then I am the sinner. And I try every day to follow in her words and the light that she gave us all. So, maybe someone out there needs to hear that, and hopefully you can too now. I hope you're okay. I hope you're doing well. And something I say to people when things get difficult. It's not what's happened. It's not what you did. It's what you do next that makes all the difference, even if it's hard. I hope you have a good day. And till next time.